Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. You know, I know my limitations. Today, I've reached those limitations. I had to hire the pros. One of my secret weapons, you know, any good business that's successful, they've got secret weapons. Meek Off Tire here in Matawan, they're just 10, 15 minutes down the road from me. They do have multiple locations throughout the state of Michigan, but these guys are great. An industrial tire center. You know, if you're looking for a place for tractor tires in your general area, you don't really want to go to the Bell Tires or the Discount Tires of the world. You want to find a place more like this. They, they deal with semi-trucks and heavy equipment, you know, ag equipment all the time. That's their specialty. This is right up their alley. So swapping out smaller tires, no big deal for me. However, we got a couple 4 Series tractors here. You got that right. I'm selling the 4066, going to keep the 4720. I want to swap the tires, swap the wheels. We're going to put the Bora wheel spacers on there today as well. These tires are loaded, okay? That means they have liquid ballast inside there. It's not just the weight of the wheel and the tire. It's 800 or 1,000 pounds of liquid ballast in there as well. So I wanted somebody to help me out doing this. These are the guys that do it. So we did a video, I don't know, last month I think it was, putting bore wheel spacers on the 1025R, but I tell you, they make it for every size machine you could have. All tractors, trucks, UTVs, you name it. Aluminum or steel, the aluminum's the way to go in my opinion. There's no prep work, you know, you don't have to prime or paint. Uh, there's no anti-seize that you need to put in there. It's just a lot easier install overall. These are made in America as well. If you wanna get wheel spacers for your tractor, your truck, or your UTV, there's gonna be a link down below or just Google Bora wheel spacers, you're sure to find them. So I hope you stick around. If you like what you see here, I'd love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button right down below and head on over to goodworkstractors.com. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna get to it with this tire swap. You know, we have a tire pro here, tire <laughs> expert Adam. You know, I have, let's see, trailer tires, multiple sets of truck tires, all Lots sorts of, of tractor, tractor tires. tires. <laughs> yeah, load them. Skid steers. Yeah, skid steer, pretty much everything. You know, whether I have it done here, they've got mobile crews, they come out to the shop, but I use Adam for just about everything. He is just the man. So he takes care of it. He's awesome to work with. If you're in this general area in Kalamazoo, I'd highly suggest stopping by. But you guys have 13 locations? 12 locations 12 total. Locations. Okay. All over Michigan and then in Illinois. Okay. So a couple states. So a lot of Michigan, a little bit of Illinois. But check them out. Meekoff Tire. We'll put a link down below so you can check it out. But he's going to be answering some questions that are on my mind about tractor ownership, maybe what you should or shouldn't do, the biggest problems to look for. The first thing I want to ask, what's the one piece of advice you would give tractor owners to take care of their tires or liquid ballast or anything along those lines? Check your air pressure and overall check your tires. Vis I mean, visually, you can see if there's an issue with a lot of different things, but air pressure is huge. I mean, you have a lower or low air pressure on a front tractor tire and you turn, you can easily roll that thing right off the bead and then you gotta come see me. If you don't, you can keep using the tractor on the weekend. Probably the number one thing right there. That makes sense. Air pressure. A question that I get a lot, you see it a lot on older tractor tires, when you start to see cracking, you know, in the rubber or dry rot, does that mean the tire's just bad? Or can you run them that way? I mean, the old Ford 9Ns, 8Ns that my grandpa had, they were like that, and they were like that my whole life that we used them. Yep. All that's going to come from dry rot, UV rays. So if you can keep your tractor inside, that's going to help you on your tires and your tractor, obviously. But if they're bad or not, not necessarily. You're not driving that thing... 80, 90 miles an hour down the highway, like a lot of people. So you don't have to necessarily worry about it blowing out at high speed, but will it cause it to leak? Possibly. Okay. Can you put a tube in it? Possibly. I mean, without seeing that individual case, it's hard to make just a general assumption. Okay, but it doesn't so, mean immediately. But no, it's not instantly junk, you gotta replace yeah. that tire. Okay, all right. A lot of them, if it still holds air and it's minor weather cracking, you can easily get by. Okay. Can you be proactive if you got some major weather cracking? Absolutely. If you don't want the problem of downtime and having fluid blowing all over your yard or having a tractor go down with an implement on the back or something there, absolutely. Be proactive about it. Have it brought in. We can look at it or tell you, yeah, that one's probably the point. You should probably do something about it. Okay. But oftentimes you might be able to put a tube in there and get some extended life. A tube's life. not going to extend the life of the tire at all. Right. The only thing a tube may take care of would be right at that starting phase of when weather cracking can cause a tire to leak. Yeah, okay. So, so you're not going to extend the life of the tire at all. You can get away with it a little bit as far as to make the tire hold there. Okay, all right. So okay. if it's a Ford 8N that your grandpa passed down to you that you've had around for 20 years and you use it a brush hog once a year, yeah. might be the situation. If it's one of your nice John Deere tractors, 
probably better go to tire because you're using it all the time. Okay. All right. All right, Adam, that's good information to know. Make sure you guys stick around. We're going to have more questions and answers throughout the video. you have an application that it's going to make sense in you're wasting everything so money fluid certain applications it can make sense in for instance i have one guy that has a Kubota zero turn um that the only reason he loaded any of them was for simply weight to ground contact okay. he goes i side mow a giant sloping grade it's hard enough soil that i mean i get a little bit of ear there he goes i just need more weight so we loaded everything on his and i mean explain to him up front i mean i'm not sure this is going to do what you're yeah. looking for it to right. but i mean the rears you're talking eight gallons maybe the fronts you're talking a gallon and a half we did it and he says it helps the only thing you would really need it for anything off the back that you've already maxed out your front weight wise yeah. say i mean your bucket of dirt your whatever kind of weight up front right. if you can put more weight up there that'd be the only thing okay. but well most front tires isn't going to do anything more than putting three suitcase weights up front what is the most annoying thing that tractor owners do with their tires? Think that a BX tire or a 1025R or 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 is going to hold up through anything. Because <laughs> you get it in, I don't know what I did, I, it doesn't have anything in it. Yeah, except for thorns and everything. Those can still puncture your tire. <laughs> you get a lot of, a lot of uh, thorns and penetrations into those front tires? Six or eight a week. Do you really? Most of them repairable? Yeah, I mean, you can tube it, you can, I mean, it's, the problem is it's an ongoing problem. It's not like nail, you can reach in and pull the whole problem out. Yeah. That problem may still be stuck in, even though you've got the head of that, or the backside of that thorn out, that head may still work its way through in uh -oh. a month, two months, somewhere down and the line. And back in again, yeah. So if you had eight of them in there and I have to put a tube in it, there's your issue of it's going to keep coming through and puncture that tube yeah. to where it may happen again, may not. Right. Is it more of an issue with the front tires and the backs? Yeah. Yeah. Is a lighter duty tire as far as carrying capacity so it has less material for it to go through i guess the other thing would be would be thinking that why well, need a heavier duty they don't make a heavier duty in that size they're going to make what carries the load what works there they don't make a 10 ply tire like what's on a bigger tractor for a 1025 r okay. for the reason being of it doesn't have load capacity it doesn't need to have that kind of that kind of rating to hold that Strength much weight yeah that makes sense. And your ply rating doesn't necessarily increase the thickness of the tire as far as the more stuff you can run over. That ply rating increases the carrying capacity of the tire, huh. how much weight it can hold. So by doing that, if it's a bias ply tire, you either have another layer of nylon, which is hardly adding anything to the amount of rubber there. Yeah. Um, if it's a radial tire, you're increasing the diameter of the cords. Okay, all right. So what do you think about these new radial tire offerings compared to the bias that's out there, I'm, you think they're worth? It's a whole, it's a whole different tire. It is very application specific. 
if you're trying to accomplish a certain goal that, that meets that application, they're perfect. Being if you're that guy that wants to use it in his yard and not tear it up with an R1 tire and doesn't want an R4 tire, um, it's a great combination of really all of them. I mean, you're getting the best of all the worlds there. Are you gonna be as good as an R1 or an R4 in certain applications? No, but you're getting the best of all all the worlds there. Is the construction of a radial, you think, that much better than the bias? Yes, it's newer technology and it's designed to run the lower air pressure where you can have a flatter profile. So is it right or wrong if the valve stem is on the inside or the outside of the there, tire? There is no right or wrong per se. Um, the only thing it really comes down to is what offset of the wheel needs to be to match that particular tractor. Because you can change be. the width of the... Correct. Different wheel styles have different way they are. These wheels, as you can see, are bowed in compared to bowed out. If you were to change that and put it on the opposite side of the tractor, that would put the ball stem to the inside, okay. but would narrow your spacing up. Okay. So yeah. different offsets of the wheel is the answer there. Of That's the only thing that determines which side that goes on. Okay. When you're loading your tires, Correct me if I'm wrong, because I feel like you told me this years ago, but I could be wrong. You want to fill it up at least above the top of the wheel? Correct. At least a three-quarter fill in general. Um, that's going to get you above your wheel, right at the top of your wheel, slightly above, and that's to reduce your slosh effect. Like um, sloshing from side to side, going back and forth? Correct. Okay. Momentum of the tractor, and then you stop, you're going to have a lot of roll in that. Makes sense. And if you're above it, above the wheel, you won't have near as much jerkiness to it because of the slosh. Okay. By that, it can at least move inside the tire. Do you want to fill them up the entire way, or do you want to leave some air in there? You still want an air pocket, um, because that's where a lot of your adjustments going to come from as far as pressure. Okay, yeah. So you can still add or remove air pressure? You can add air pressure, yes. Removing air pressure, if you're above that valve stem at a 12 o'clock position, you're going to have to drain any fluid to remove air okay. to get to that point. So be very careful adding air. Be cautious of are you going to want to take it back out? Yeah, yeah. Done. Wow, Thank nice. You. Boy, I didn't even break a sweat today. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, guys. Well, we got it all done. Well, when I say when I say we, <laughs> Adam did it all. Courtney helped you know? too. <laughs> yeah, he did everything. But you know, it was something I did not want to tackle myself. I mean, these are these are heavy, big, loaded tires. The pros know what they're doing. That little forklift there with the tire grabber thing is amazing. That's pretty awesome, but you got to know how to use it. He was able to line right up on the hubs. We got the wheel spacers installed. Makes a huge difference. You should see the wide profile that's on the 4720. We'll make sure we show it to you, but when you're out in the field, if you're on hills, you know, anywhere, it's going to feel a lot more stable side to side. You've got a Kubota L series, right? Correct. L3600. Yeah. How does that feel? Does that feel you're pretty flat land? I mean, it's definitely narrow for some situations. I mean, you start to run down a hill and side hill at all. Yeah. You're definitely top heavy. Yeah. So whether it's a small tractor or a big tractor, you can all always use some more stability there. That's why we got these boards installed here. So Adam, thank you very much. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Thanks to Mikoff. Thank you guys for stopping by. If you like what you see here, I would love to get a thumbs up from you. Hit that subscribe button right down below and head on over to GooperTractors.com. Lots of cool attachments over there. Thanks again for stopping by and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. still see a lot of tires that are corroded out from the old calcium chloride and the valve stems. Tons. Do you really? Somebody's got their grandpa's or their dad's or something. Like I said, Ford Night Ends, we've done tons of them. Um, and I mean, calcium chloride was corrosive, nasty stuff. It ate everything. So yeah, you see them normally around the valve stems is where you'll see it. That valve stem hole might have went from that size to <laughs> all the way around or the entire bead right here may be to the point where it's rusted to where we swing a hammer to break the bead. You stick a hammer right through the wheel. Wow, wow. So so I think I remember another thing I think you told me a long time ago is if on the newer tires or anytime you're gonna be adding liquid to it, if it's a rubber valve stem, you replace it with? 100%. If okay. you're gonna put fluid in a tire at all, make sure it's got a um, all metal valve stem on it. All metal. Some of the newer tractors are coming OE 
with, this is called the TR218 valve stem, or the 618, a 218's on tube. TR618 valve stem, they make the same one with a pull through rubber the, uh, base on it down here. Yeah. And then it's got the removable core housing. Once fluid goes in those, time and time and time again, we see them fail. It'll blow the entire valve stem out, and then you got a 5 8 hole of fluid just pouring out, gushing at you. Wow. wow. So, <laughs> absolutely, if you're going to fill a tire at all, make sure it has a metal valve stem. Fronts or rears, big or little, anything, make sure it has a. Do you see a lot of these get ripped off because there's no guards on them? I wouldn't say a lot, but it does happen. I, I brought one in. So I was going to say, I wouldn't say a lot, but it does happen. <laughs> we just yesterday went out to a job and did a Kubota tire. Um, probably very similar size, maybe a little bit smaller, but same thing. The guy was working his food plot up and was on his way out, going down a narrow lane. And he goes, I don't know, I drove it right in that way. It should have been fine. Caught a branch, caught something heavier than yeah. whatever he caught on the way in. And sure enough, broke it right off. He sent me a picture of it and I said, yep, that's all you did. <laughs> Tire's fine, the bell stuff's gone. 